And the birds are go. It's okay, it's totally F-A-B. All right, so, I've done a Thunderbird 2 historical breakdown, if you like, but as you gaze upon the, the joy of the pullback Thunderbird 1 there, um, I should mention that when I say it's 60 years of Thunderbird 1, I do not have an, the earliest example of a Thunderbird 1 toy here because they are really expensive. The reason being that I have done some more research since my Thunderbird 2 video and I now understand that there is a company called JR21, um, Rosenthal Century 21 basically, and they released Thunderbirds toys in the 60s. They are very expensive, they are over £100 a pop. So, because I'm on a budget, as we by things like this, um, I can't show you one of those. But it does mean there has been a Thunderbird 1 in production for at least as long as there's been a Thunderbird 2 in production. But interestingly, Dinky did not do a Thunderbird 1 toy. So, my Thunderbird 1 collection, here in front of you now, um, does include this one. This one's actually by Bandai, strange enough. This was 92. But that is the same year, he says, seamlessly, as this one was brought out. And this is a Matchbox Thunderbird 1. And its scale is not huge, as you can tell. It's only as, as wide as my four fingers there. Um, or as tall as my four fingers, I should say. Um, swing wing, yes. Um, does it have electronics? No, it does not. It has... You know, a decent level of, of detailing on it on the, on the back there. You can see all the thrusters. And, you know, I rather like the the lettering down the side of it. And, you know, generally it's, it's, it's coloration and everything else are, are very, very nice. Um, ironically, I was getting myself muddled up just before I started filming this. So I checked and there does seem to be an electronic matchbox Thunderbird 1. However... None of the examples I saw had one out of the box, so I'm a little bit puzzled as to whether or not it was actually in existence. Now, I should mention this is metal, this is heavy, um, so it's a nice durable example of it. So you'll easily find one of these again, because this one is only 30 years old at the time of recording. So, you know, there's still plenty of those out in the wild, that's not a problem. So, as you might recall from the Thunderbird 2 video, the next era of Thunderbird toys comes with Carlton licensing Vivid. And so the Vivid toys um, are sound tech toys. And so their sound tech Thunderbird one looks like this. And it is somewhat bigger than the Matchbox, which I will put here by way of comparison. So as you can say, as you can see, they're not, they're, neither of them are huge, um, but they are, they are roughly comparable size wise. So, the bigger difference is this. Slightly poor on the battery's front. I have put new batteries in it, but that seems to be about as good as it's going to get for that particular example. Um, obviously, both these are still classic Thunderbird 1s, so they've got the very, very similar um, writing on them. Um, you know, it's all very, very spot on. But this one just has the little button here to trigger the sound effect. Hope I'm not too late, Father, he said, which is, you put the pop batteries in here, it takes three LR41s, I want to say they are, um, which was kindly, I got help um, from the Twitter crowd to uh, identify that as a as the uh, the correct battery sourcing, but there, it might be that I've just got poor quality batteries in there, it's always possible um, Amazon sourced batteries aren't always the greatest, but that if I could read that, that would say Carlton 99, basically. Um, now, the big surprise here for me, when I was doing this piece of research, because again, in the 1980s, none of these were available, so I didn't have any Thunderbird 1s as I was growing up, as with my Thunderbird 2s, didn't have any until these examples I've got for you here. But to my surprise, I discovered that there was an enormous Thunderbird 1, so enormous that I've actually got to sort of pan out for you to be able to see it. So as you can see, she's huge. She's a properly, properly big Thunderbird 1. And um, sound tech... Mobile control to Thunderbird 2. Somewhat, somewhat more convincing. Every second counts. So flying noises and the works. So much, much more 
impressive beast even those those little guys and to give you an example an idea this is the the small carlton next to it and as you can see there's absolutely no comparison whatsoever you know she must be nearly a foot long if not more so that's a, it's a much more impressive toy but that's not the end of it because as with the thunderbird 2s this one has more play features so here i'm going to leave it lying down simply because i think it's easier in a sense but you see there's the hatch up top here and rings go across that's interesting i didn't know it did that i think that was me extending the wings that triggered that sound effect yep cool so when she's going supersonic that you get an extra sound effect so inside here you get the you get more play figures and these of course are the teeny teeny tiny little Carlton figures that you get and they are literally you know we are talking sort of thumbnail size here um, but it's a very clever way because Carlton realized that they could you know do them effectively to scale now I'm not convinced that's the right figure that doesn't look massively like Scott to me the hair color is wrong but I stand, I stand to be corrected if someone can tell me any difference. And you can actually switch to between horizontal and vertical flight. I've not really got these out to have a look at before. But that's very clever. Because that's exactly what happens in the series. Switching between horizontal and vertical flight. I like that. That's nice. Um, there's, a little bit, there's a little bit of, of detail in there as well. I don't know if you'll be able to see that. It's kind of difficult to get the light source in there. But there's also, there's, there's also a little bit of diagram work in there. Just to give it a bit more flavour. Um, but that's not the end of it, because there is also a play area in here. Um, if I can remember how to get it open. There we go. And, in, and this is absolutely packed. I actually found it quite difficult to get this stuff back in. So it's got one of the little um, the sort of rocket sleds that they used to use to get around to avoid them having to walk, which of course they weren't very good at in the original series. But that's, that's very cool. Um, and it's all adding to play value. And you've got a mobile... Uh, command and control center is tucked away in here as well and if you remember this is what scott used to use um and set up because thunderbird one was effectively the, the first responder of the thunderbirds um so we got to the, the danger zone first assessed it and generally speaking thunderbird two was probably already en route but um to get all of that into thunderbird one in and of itself is really quite clever um because it means that if you are a die-hard fan, then you can really sort of set it up. And let me let me show you these as well. My example isn't perfect. So these landing struts are actually a little bit broken. Um, I don't know how breaky they are in general, but mine are a little bit breaky. But you can you just you can flip them out like that, and then if you're very careful, also they should sort of reinforce themselves. Um, because so it was the one floor with Thunderbird 1, it couldn't, it couldn't land vertically, it took off vertically, but it didn't land vertically. So you have these landing struts coming out of the, the wings per the series, and um, you, it just pops down like that. So she's perfectly happy landed like that on, on those, that's no problem at all. So it's just a really, and as I say, it was really strange because until I'd, until I'd done my research and sort of searched for it, um, I didn't realise that this this large Thunderbird one existed. And as far as I'm aware, depending on how big the really old 60s version is, this might be the biggest Thunderbird one going that was kind of mainstream sold in, in toy stores. Because for, some, for whatever reason, Matchbox didn't go down this road unless that electronic one that I've only seen in, you know, sort of boxed was, was of a similar size. I, I just don't know, I, not having seen it, I don't know what that one was like. So if you'd like to tell me in the comments, please do, because I'm, I'm ignorant on that one. But this is the only one I've been able to pick up easily from eBay. Um, and, you know, it's in, it's in reasonably, reasonably good condition. There seem to be a few of them around. So, you know, it's not, not too difficult to find. But it is by far and away the biggest example of Thunderbird one that I have, which I find puzzling because, it, you know, it's a rocket ship, effectively. You, you would think that they'd have tried a bit harder, and I don't know why... Matchbox didn't in 92 because they did it for the Thunderbird 2 so I don't know why they didn't try it with Thunderbird 1 but maybe they made their figures too big so they felt they couldn't do anything with it or something I don't know um bit of a bit of a puzzle of that one but that's quite you know I thought that was quite a nice example and it was nice to get all the um the sort of little mini elements to it you don't always see all the 
um, you know, the sort of the rocket sleds and the, the, the kind of control centre and so on. They don't always come with it, so it's worth checking that before you commit to one. So we now move on to the, the movie, um, or a movie. <laughs> now, of course, we don't, we see a lot of Thunderbird, we see Thunderbird 1 for like all of two seconds. We don't see a lot of it, but that is the, the small pullback Thunderbird 1 from the 2004 film. Um, it does still work after a fashion. So, you know, convincing enough, and it's, it is metal, it's not, it's, it's not, um, it's not entirely plastic at all, so in fairness to it, it's not bad, but it doesn't have swing wings, unusually. Um, even this one, even this one that I did my Bandai intro with, has, does have swing wings. <laughs> so, ironically, given that, um, I think it was actually Bandai who was making this version, yeah, it was Bandai who made these later versions, largely. Um, so it's somewhat ironic that they didn't copy themselves when they did the modern version, but there you go. Such is life sometimes. Now, that is not my only version of, of that that I actually have, because I do also have this, which I've left in the box. Um, and as you can see, this is a substantially bigger version of it. Um, and it also comes with a little tiny Fab 1 here. But it's, you can tell that's going to have, I would hope it has... I'm, I'm saying it has swing wings. I'm hoping it has swing wings. You would expect it to have swing wings. Do you know what? I'm not entirely sure that it does. Again, um, I'd be interested in the, in the comments on that one. It does have this sort of launch assembly um, element to it, which I think is in this version of it. Um, it looks like it might have um, landing gear built into it as well somehow, I think. So again, it's 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 a slightly sort of different thought process behind this this version of it, I think, um, and it's not one that's used massively in the film at all. Strangely, it's literally used as a sort of as a you know get from A to B kind of ship. It's not really massively used in the film that I remember. So it is what it is, I guess. You know, it's just one of those things they just didn't really think about the craft perhaps quite so much in the fit in this film as it perhaps we might have hoped but you know I think we all know what we think about the film so I'll leave it there with that one and um, I'll leave that one boxed up for the sake of it and then of course we get on to the 2015 series and perhaps the biggest change there is that we get a figure like this for Scott and um, you know he was very much in command and control of the Thunderbirds at the time of this more modern series. He's got a, a funky little uh, jet pack that he uses in the series there on his back. He's, um, he's pretty well articulated. He's, he's, he, has, he has knees, which is always nice. And he's got elbows. Um, and he's got a, a rotating head. So um, although he seems, he's, you know, he feels a little bit flimsy. He's a little bit loose. But um, generally speaking, he is at least... You know, a sort of figure you can use, but sadly, Scott here does not have a ride because there is no big Thunderbird one from the Vivid 2015 toy series. I don't know why. I don't know if it, they just they just petered out before they got to it or what it was. But all we do get is this Thunderbird one. Now, this of course immediately looks really, really similar to the original Thunderbird one. And obviously that was intentional because at the end of the day, there's nothing wrong with Thunderbird one's design. So if I put the Carlton next to it, you can see that was a little bit bigger than the Carlton. It's not hugely bigger than the Carlton, but it's a little bit bigger than the Carlton. Um, so if I were to line them all up, and obviously it does take a cue from the Carlton in the sense that it's, um, you know, it's it's electronic as well, which I'll, I'll show you in a second. But those are your your sort of three Thunderbird one examples there at that sort of scale, which is you know which is fine. Um, but you know they they've all got sort of Thunderbird one down the side. They've got a one in the same place on the um the sort of the blue um, combustion -y sort of chamber, I guess, compartment there. The TB one there is orientated differently to that although actually it's oriented differently on these two as well <laughs> so um but you know essentially probably the closest of all the vehicles to the to the original i would say um it's like a different way of getting in and out but the clever one it's like a different approach here is that you twist the the thrusters at the bottom to bring the wings out which is um a, a novelty which the others don't do but it, this also has electronics So 
there you go. Then after a while, it says something else again as it shuts down. So you'll see the difference. One difference here is that this does have a very distinct cockpit element to it. There. Um, FAB, I'm on it. There you go. So um, somewhat different. Um, has a bit more versatility than it did in the original series, of course, because with it being CGI, they were able to do more with it. Um, but it's it's still very very reminiscent of the original and therefore different to the, the way that the film went where the film made it somewhat different um, and finally just to round it off I'm going from the a larger version to a, to a teeny tiny version and this is the Tomica version of it um, which as you can see fairly sits inside the, the palm of my hand there and if we look at the other smallest one even the matchbox uh, version is is longer and taller than the um, the Tomica one, but these were intended to be the sort of the really sort of micro versions. But again, it's a very faithful recreation of the modern series Thunderbird. Um, it's even got, if you can see that, it's even got managed. They've even managed to get the Thunderbird writing down the side of it, which is impressive at that scale. So again, it's a nice. It's a nice little um, diecast version of it, and the wings do fold in and out as well. Um, these are just manual, manually done though they don't um, they're not operated from below like, like the uh, it's bigger version it does have very very wobbly rubbery um, sort of tips there but I think it's because it's die cast um, so I guess they didn't they didn't want to risk any, any children taking an eye uh, an eye out by um, her by accident by having a, a metal a metal tipped Thunderbird 1 which would be a bad thing and again all the cones on Thunderbird 1 are invariably rubberized because that I imagine is perhaps one of the reasons why they didn't do so many really big ones because a lot of eyeballs could probably have been lost by that going where it shouldn't do. But that is my um, my somewhat briefer than Thunderbird 2 Thunderbird 1 rundown simply because there aren't as many big ones to show you unfortunately and um, obviously Thunderbird 1 doesn't have the ancillary vehicles generally speaking that um, Thunderbird 2 has but I'm going to come back and look at some of the the other vehicles in the range as well. So I'm not quite done yet, um, but if I from now that I've put off one and two, logically three would be next, I guess. So um, three is on my to do list, and I'm also gathering examples of others. Thunderbird five is probably going to be the exception to the rule because there aren't that many of it. And for some reason, some examples of it are quite pricey as well. So I'll probably stick to the main vehicles that launch from Tracy Island, I think it's fair to say. I think that's a reasonable enough thing to do. But I do also have quite a few fab ones to show you. So um, we will get to those as well in due course. But so if you've enjoyed that, please do like and subscribe. And um, I'll see you again. Cheers for now.